Ah, I didn't do that. They did. The, um, well, I have to tell you this, that I'm honored to be here with uh, real climate scientists. And even in the last 18 hours, I've heard so much here that just reaffirms the kind of beliefs that I've come to over the last 15 or 20 years as I've been interested. And uh, while I'm not a climate scientist, I am a student of environmental science. And I consider myself an informed critic. Uh, you know, while our home planet is, it, it, from orbit, it appears very small and fragile. But humanity has been adapting to continuously changing climate for the last million years. Climate science was a respected field of science up until about 30 years ago. And that's when alarmists began to ignore scientific discipline. Global climate change is a scientific question, and it's dependent on scientific data to understand it. Unfortunately, subjective opinion has been carrying the day. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And human-caused global warming has become an issue that's been shaped by opinion, politics, and financial control. Well, I'm not here to make the scientific case against human-caused global warming, anthropogenic warming, AGW, climate change, climate disruption, or whatever the latest phrase is that alarmists are using to just uh, promote their claim that humans are controlling the temperature of the Earth. My fellow panelists and many others here already in the last day uh, have disproven these alarmist claims. Their honest science enables me to battle on other fronts <clears throat> and discuss some other things that I believe we should be doing, climate scientists should be doing. Scientists have long known that the sun, the oceans, and variations of the Earth's orbit are the principal drivers of our changing climate. And while we may not fully understand all of the mechanisms or interactions that are involved, after hundreds of years of empirical data, that became an accepted theory of climate change. Well, as you know, scientists have always questioned accepted theories. Back in the 1980s, a small group of individuals became very concerned about the Earth's temperature and what it might do in the future. I hesitate to call them scientists because they abandoned the scientific principles by uh, which their uh, guess about future temperature increases and its cause could achieve scientific acceptance or rejection. Global warming alarmists focused on the small temperature increase since the Industrial Revolution, and they hypothesized that the tiny amount of carbon dioxide that humans were generating was controlling the temperature of our planet. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, I guess I got to come on one at a time here. Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> they could have made their case by collecting and making available solid evidence to support their hypothesis. And two, by defending their claims in the court of scientific inquiry, not in the court of public opinion. Instead, they refused to release their data that would permit other scientists to replicate their results, if that was possible. Today's public really doesn't know what to believe about when it comes to humans causing global warming. Politicians, in the absence of knowledge and understanding about climate science, have put themselves out on a limb <clears throat> from which they find it very difficult to retreat. The alarmists have managed to sell the media <clears throat> excuse me, the media and the public on human-caused global warming. 
and something that they've invented called consensus science. Those of us skeptical of those scientists' claims are labeled as climate deniers or fake experts or against climate change. Well, instead of presenting data to prove their hypothesis, the alarmists challenge skeptics like us to disprove that hypothesis. And while scientists are best qualified to deal with the scientific and the academic aspects of that question, all of us will suffer the financial consequences of actions that are take, taken based on bad science. Today's global warming war is a battle to avoid governmental control of energy consumption and the lowering of our standard of living. <clears throat> the temperature of our planet has been changing for 4.8 billion years. And both temperature and carbon dioxide levels are currently near their historical minimums. The last time they were both simultaneously at such low levels is about 300 million years ago. And about 500 million years ago, the carbon dioxide level was approximately 15 times higher than it is today. Even in the past 10,000 years, there have been many occasions when the temperature was higher than it is today. For the alarmist, hypo the alarmist hypothesis to be accepted by scientific community, one, it must be confirmed by considerable evidence, and two, it must survive all attempts to disprove it. The alarmist hypothesis has not satisfied either of these criteria. Most of today's population is unable to distinguish between science and non-science, or between a hypothesis and a theory. The alarmists, they gained immediate traction with environmentalists, the green movement, the media, and eventually with many politicians. Now, in the absence of supporting data, they are pitching to the public, where politics, media, and money play very important roles. The alarmists like to refer to a correlation between temperature and CO2 levels. Well, we all know that correlation is not causation. But just in case, our friend, Dr. Roy Spencer, who you may have heard already, <coughs> excuse me, he studied the correlation between ocean temperature and UFO sightings. Something I should know a little about. And Roy published a humorous article back in April. Sure enough, <coughs> the correlation between UFO reports and ocean temperature is frightening. <laughs> Does that mean that we can lower the Earth's temperature by reducing the number of UFO sightings? Well, the only thing that alarmists are able to cite in support of their simplistic hypothesis, hypotheses, I guess, are the mathematical models which they developed to prove that human-caused carbon dioxide is a dominant factor in controlling the Earth's temperature. Well, these climate models have never successfully predicted anything. And keep in mind, models are based on assumptions. That's opinions. If their bases for, are the, <clears throat> if the bases for these assumptions are wrong, the results can never accurately predict future behavior. And as realists, we should be emphasizing that models are not data. Realists focus on empirical data and the scientific process, neither of which support the hypothesis that alarmists have dreamed up. And that is why alarmists resort to consensus science, politics, 
money. And along the way, they've convinced most of the media that humans, excuse me, that humans cause global warming. They've convinced them that that is an accepted scientific theory. As realists, we've been fighting on the scientific front. And we are winning the scientific battle with history, facts, and scientific theory all on the side of global warming skeptics like us. Why is climate change still a controversial issue? Well, I think it's because this global warming war is being fought on a number of fronts. There's a scientific front on which we're winning. And there's the media front, the public perception front, and the political front, which now also encompasses education. Our challenge is to focus on the public's perception of global warming issues. And the real battle today, and where we appear to be losing, is on the media front. The media plays the most influential role in the public perception and to some degree with the politicians. We have allowed alarmists to seize the semantic high ground. That's a tactic that has helped move the subject away from the scientific arena and into the political and economic arenas. The media, the public, and most politicians have little scientific literacy, with some rare exceptions, I agree, and they show very little interest in gaining it. And that does not prevent the media from playing a major role in this fight. Many journalists are aggressively pushing human-caused global warming. And they influence a great many readers and listeners. Our challenge at this stage in this war is to engage the alarmists on the media front and bring the media and the public back to reality. Alarmists refuse to accept that today's weather is within historical natural climate variability. And they are reluctant to admit that man has little control over nature. That is why global warming is sometimes referred to as a religion with the alarmists. To take global warming on faith, you have to reject empirical data and what we have learned about climate change over the centuries, and embrace the unproven hypothesis that humans are responsible for global temperature changes. These true believers in humans controlling the Earth's temperature cannot be reasoned out of their position. It was not reason that got them there in the first place. It was emotion and politics. Today, the politicization of science is pushing global warming fears in our universities and in K-12 education. For example, the new Common Core Framework for science, for science education states that fossil fuels are the cause of catastrophic global warming. Common Core is also saying that man, not nature, has been the main driver of climate change for most of the past century. While scientists are making it increasingly plain that humans have little influence over the Earth's temperature, the alarmists are still winning on the media front, the political front, and the public front, which means we have to do a better job of communicating. Realists need to engage the alarmists on the media front to bring the media and the public back to reality. We should all be telling the media, excuse me, and the public not to just buy the opinions of others. That includes my opinion. Look at the empirical data themselves. Emphasize that empirical data is not just another opinion. Emphasize that man's historical ability to adapt to temperature changes and how energy consumption has raised our standard of living. 
Quit letting alarmists control nomenclature. We should emphasize that the argument is not about climate change. It's about the cause of climate change. When writing and speaking, we skeptics should consistently refer to the alarmist claims as human-caused global warming. Don't refer to it as anthropogenic warming, AGW, climate change, or climate disruption. We should make it plain that human-caused global warming is not a scientific theory. It's how the alarmists choose to look at temperature, at the temperature change in the ongoing human-caused global warming war. This battle for public perception may be more critical than the scientific front. Human-caused global warming may be the biggest scientific myth-based scam in our history. And this fight should not be beneath the dignity of climate science realists, especially when we're dealing with the media. Thank you.